Queen first appeared as the 5 star feature on her original banner. As you can see from the stat chart, her stats were literally off the charts, which clearly meant she was a game breaker and should be pursued as such. Except if we take a look at the other featured unit, a 4 star 9, his stats appear to be a lot more interesting. Which explains why the developers stopped using this form of advertisement. Queen's Trustmaster reward is outdated. Her Super Trustmaster reward is an accessory with a strong amount of attack. It also has a Guts buff, which is great for those fragile damage dealers. On to her active abilities. She's got some magic spells, but unfortunately none of them can be awakened further. Now, for normal abilities. Don't touch that, don't use this, laugh at that. Triple Slip lets her evade 3 attacks, which is definitely a step up. Piercing Thunderbolt is a new ability, but she should have gotten this a while ago. You can tell because the lightning impero is at 100%, and the paralysis isn't guaranteed, but it's still not as bad as her first few abilities. It's a lightning attack that changes the absolute mirror of equity, and raises its damage modifier for future use. Flinch Proof Martyr is the weakest re-raise if necessary. Devastate is devastating to look at. Armor Piercing Chains of QH, which, for people who don't know, is Quick Hit, which should have been changed into Boating Strike a while ago. Hollow Piercing is even worse, as there's nothing interesting about it. Exploder eats up a big chunk of Queen's HP because it's funny. Summon Eidolon foes the Evocation Gauge, foes a large amount of your team's limit burst gauges, and then Queen dies. Oath Thrust uses lightning damage that chains of Boating Strike, lowers the enemy's defense by 80%, and inflicts a 120% lightning in peril. Mana Charge can be used twice per battle. It boosts her attack by 300%, makes her resistant to attack breaks, and boosts her lightning damage by 30%. Passives. With her Trustmaster reward or Super Trustmaster reward equipped, she gets a 300% booster of defense and spirit, which is fantastic. But she also has to have like 6% of her health bar for that to activate. Otherwise, it also boosts her limit burst gauge fill rate and boosts her equipment attack by 100% when she's carrying a single weapon. She deals increased damage to machine and stone type enemies, has a strong booster limit burst damage, and has a nice fill rate for her limit burst gauge. She also has several more notable passives. Berserk can help if she ever gets to that point, she'll get a guts buff if you awaken justice guard, and she meets half the chain cap limit boost. Also, she somehow hits the full stack cap for attack even without carrying any weapons, how do you do that? Let's look at her limit burst. It makes you wish you didn't. On to her super limit burst. Thanks to the automatic attack shift buff, she'll get a 250% attack buff, a 200% limit burst damage buff, and completely fill her limit burst gauge when her super limit burst is ready. The super limit burst itself inflicts a 130% lightning in peril, raises her lightning damage by 35%, grants her machine and stone killer, and then deals lightning damage that partially ignores the enemy's defense. Let's rank brave abilities. I recommend raising, she has one. It only raises damage, do with it what you will. Time to make a damage rotation. I'll assume she's at EX plus 1. On turn 1, triple cast Boat Thrust. On turn 2, cast Mana Charge and double cast Piercing Thunderbolt. On turn 3, triple cast Piercing Thunderbolt. On turn 4, triple cast Boat Thrust. On turn 5, Super Lemma Burst. And then just repeat the rotation from here. So, EX 2. While all Super Lemma Burst users benefit from an EX Awakening, the fact that every Super Limit Burst user benefits from such sort of cheapens to act. Of course, the literal price itself doesn't get any lower, which should make players reluctant to be so reckless with their resources. If we look at her passives, we see that she has 1, an instant Limit Burst, which is locked behind EX plus 3. Now Queen's Limit Burst might just be the weakest thing ever, but it compensates for it by being off element. Did I also mention that it's the weakest thing ever? Regardless, if you have the resources to spare, go ahead and raise Queen's EX level for the Super Limit Burst. Just be aware you're not getting much else out of it. So how good is Neo Vision Awakened Queen? Though she's just a Neo Vision Awakened unit, she's still very strong. As a Super Limit Burst user, she lacks a brave shift, but to offset that glaring weakness, Queen brings big damage. Which doesn't exactly address that flaw in any substantial way, but I suppose it shouldn't matter so long as you defeat the opponent fast enough. Still, just try not to take a hit I guess. Queen does have a variety of other abilities, though some of them aren't substantial, like that weak MP regen. She does have a nice set of passive style, but summon Eidolon could always be useful in case someone else has a better limit burst, which really isn't a high bar. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. 
Comment below if you Neo Vision Awakened Queen. I don't even have her Super Trustmaster reward, so if you have any additional copies, please send them my way.